6,000 years ago, the Mediterranean Sea surged through the Bosporus Straits in what is now modern Turkey with tremendous force. It inundated an ancient lake and forced droves of refugees to flee to the far corners of the earth at a time when civilization was just starting. Could this massive flood be the same catastrophe told of in the biblical story of Noah? The idea that the flood is the worst thing that's ever happened to mankind may be true because we do not have any other such basins flooded on a, such a huge scale when humankind was around to remember it. And there are no other geological phenomena that would equal the magnitude of this. But what triggered the flood? 8,000 years ago, the last ice age was just coming to an end. The Earth's temperature was rising, causing the vast ice sheets covering the northern hemisphere to start melting. Around 8,300 years ago, the remaining bit of the Laurentide ice sheet in North America collapsed, and it poured into the North Atlantic, and you had a sea level rise almost instantaneously. Meltwater caused the world's oceans to rise more than five feet, pushing the Mediterranean Sea towards the Black Sea Basin. Because of all these glaciers melting worldwide was increasing the height of the global ocean, and that increased the height in the Aegean Sea and then the Sea of Marmara. When the level of the Aegean and Marmara got to a certain point, it breached the dam at the Bosporus. Geologists Walter Pittman and William Ryan believe the rise in sea level led to a catastrophic and instantaneous flood of the Black Sea Basin. But others in the scientific community aren't convinced that is what happened. Some argue it wasn't a cataclysmic event at all. Instead, the rise in sea level would have caused water from the Mediterranean to flow into the Black Sea Basin more gradually over a long period of time, perhaps thousands of years making it too slow to be the catalyst for flood myths worldwide. The alternative hypothesis to Ryan and Pittman's catastrophic flooding hypothesis is that the Black Sea would have risen more or less in lockstep with the rest of the world ocean, and so the rise would have been relatively smooth, and there's no catastrophe. But to be the foundation of flood myths, the Black Sea Basin would have had to fill instantaneously. Is there any proof of a mega flood surge? And just how fast was it? Oceanographer Mark Siddall, who studies fluid dynamics, believed that a catastrophic influx of water into the Black Sea would leave behind distinct evidence on the sea floor. I found it a little surprising that with all of the vast amounts of water flowing into a small basin with very malleable uh, mud underneath it, the idea that there wouldn't be geological evidence for that that was not ambiguous uh, seemed surprising. In 2002, Siddall began focusing on the Bosporus Straits the location that any breach, either from a massive flood or a slow migration, would have been most likely to have occurred. Following the collapse of such an earth dam, the water would really charge quickly down the Bosporus into the Black Sea. I wanted to try and get a feeling for how the fluids of any jet would flow into the Bosporus, the amount of energy involved, and how much that might leave characteristic features on the seafloor. Siddall created a computer model of what the mouth of the Black Sea at the Bosporus might have looked like prior to any influx of water. The computer simulated a fast and slow infill of salt water across the strait and into the Black Sea. When Siddall created the hypothetical flood, he watched how the salt water would have affected the sea floor. The computer revealed that a massive wall of water would create a deep underwater channel at the mouth of the Black Sea, and that this flow of water would have moved in a very unusual direction. 
water coming out of the mouths of almost all waterways in the Northern Hemisphere usually flows to the right due to the rotation of the Earth. But Siddall's results showed a distinct channel curving to the left. We found, yeah, indeed, there is uh, a channel which is the same width as the width of the Bosporus, but which follows a very strange path which turns to the left. Now, under normal circumstances, all of the current wants to turn to the right because of the Earth's rotation. To Siddall, this confirmed that only a massive amount of water breaking through the Bosphorus quickly could have had enough force to make the current move in the opposite direction to the Earth's rotation. But this was only a computer model. What Siddall needed was proof, actual images of the Black Sea floor. Siddall compared his data with sonar images taken by a team of French researchers who had just created the first underwater map of where the Bosphorus meets the Black Sea. The results that they came back with really looked very similar to the predictions of our model. So there was, a, in a way, a eureka moment. Another piece of crucial evidence was in place. The corroboration from the sonar images suggested that a huge amount of water flowed in through the Bosporus and flooded the area in a matter of years. Just how much water? Siddall's computer model calculated that 60,000 cubic meters flowed into the Black Sea Basin every second following the breaching of the small strip of land that is now the Bosporus. Water levels in the lake rose by nearly 500 feet. That flow is going to charge down the channel and hit the Black Sea into a huge impact. Thousands of car crashes every, every instant. Massive impact. And you're really talking about a huge amount of water. That amount of water pouring into the valley would no doubt have wiped out many settlements and forced countless survivors to flee. If you'd been someone who had been living there at this time, one of these sort of simple farmers, and suddenly you're faced with this rapidly rising sea level, it's hard to imagine how you could possibly have coped with that. This vast current flowing and flooding the Black Sea area, it was, it was tremendous. It is nearly impossible to visualize this much water rushing through the Bosporus following a breach. But Chris Paola at the University of Minnesota created a small model of the strip of land separating the Mediterranean from the ancient valley below to illustrate how massive the initial flood would have been. Well, we're looking at the rising sea level in the world ocean connected through the Mediterranean and the Sea of Marmara right down to the Bosporus. So the whole world ocean over here, the choke point there. The erosion is catastrophic because the water is accelerating. A tremendous amount of force is being exerted at ocean scale on this small bank of sediment that's in effect holding back the entire ocean from the Black Sea. The flood builds on itself. It's like an explosive release of water into the Black Sea. And very quickly, as the sediment wall is eroded away, the water floods into the Black Sea and abruptly raises its level. Anyone living in there until the moment when the water actually crested this would have had no idea what was coming. The water erodes away at the base of the sediment. The sea level rises in the Black Sea. The fresh water that was there is now replaced by salt water from the Mediterranean and the Bosporus drowned, which is how we see it today. This model of the Bosporus is six inches wide. The actual Bosporus Straits, where the flood probably happened, is over two miles across at its widest point. The world has seen some immense floods, but eventually they have all receded, the water usually returning from whence it came. But these waters didn't recede. a permanent change. It wasn't part of the natural rhythm of the Earth. It was an anomalous effect that no one had ever seen before, and that, in fact, is a transformation that's still with us. If this kind of Black Sea flood really did occur, it would have been a monumental event in the development of civilization as we know it. It would have scattered a large number of people to other parts of the Earth, and it would certainly have changed how a, a lot of later civilization would have evolved. But does any evidence of a once thriving civilization remain? 
It's uncertain how many people might have been affected by a flood like this. Probably something on the order of a few hundred thousand people, which may not sound like a lot by our modern standards, except that, remember, at this time, the whole global population was probably only about five million people. So this would have been uh, a major flooding event that would have unseated a huge portion of the Earth's population. You could run away from the flood, but you could not take anything with you. So all their possessions, all their villages, they were flooded. And these people, they were dispersed. For 